Hey guys, in this video, I'll go through some of the steps it took for me to install a carbon fiber drive shaft. Um, as you may know, I have an 04 WRX drivetrain. So I'm going to share some observations and tips that may be useful if you're thinking about doing this upgrade. Getting right into it, removing the drive shaft. To remove the stock drive shaft, you have to remove the mid and rear sections of your exhaust. This means everything after the downpipe. Now this is all one piece, so you don't have to disconnect your mid pipe and your muffler. You can just take off the front two bolts that connect it to the cat and then remove the that assembly. After that, you remove the heat shield that covers the center bearing of your OEM two-piece dry shaft. Then you're going to take the low cover off of the rear diff T-bar. It's just six bolts. Now from here, I suggest you remove the four bolts that connect the dry shaft to the rear diff. And at this point, the rear section of the dry shaft should be hanging. After that, you remove the two center bearing bolts. Now when you do that, make sure you have something that holds up the dry shaft. Because once you remove those center bearing bolts, there's nothing else holding up the, the drive shaft. So you have to, I guess, hold it like one side with your hand and then unbolt them or take them out however you see fit. Now the reason why I take I suggest taking the two center bolts out last is because it allows you to have control over both sides of the dry shaft. So when they are loose, you can just lower it a little bit and slide it towards the rear and then it'll slide right off right off the uh, output shaft of the transmission and the dry shaft is out. Since the OEM shaft is out, let's see what I'm paying for. Now, never mind the cheap scale. Since I'm using it for both parts, the important value is the weight difference or delta between the OEM shaft and the aftermarket shaft. The OEM shaft weighs in at 20.8 pounds, and the carbon fiber shaft is 11.8. So that's 9 pound or 43% weight reduction from stock. Now, considering that this is rotating weight being removed from my drivetrain, it should definitely be felt on the butt dyno. Installing the new shaft is just reverse operation, but of course I got some suggestions. The new flange on the rear part of the shaft, the part that attaches to the diff, is twice as thick as the OEM shaft. This means the OEM bolts, in my opinion, are not long enough. Looking at the pick, you can see that the thread only goes about halfway through the nut. And I'm not okay with that. So I ran out to the store and got these 35 millimeter long M8 bolts that should definitely get the job done. After replacing them, there's plenty of thread to grab and a bunch of clearance. And I solved my problem for about three bucks. The next thing I found is that the clearance between the lower diff cover or counterweight and the shaft U joint is almost non existent. That's not camera magic. That's the amount of space that I have between the two. The last thing you want your U-joint to do is run to a static object at highway speed. That won't be a good day. So for the rearmost bolts on the lower cover, I just added some washers and they worked as shims. Now that shouldn't negatively affect the rigidity of the system and it will definitely give me peace of mind when I'm launching or at highway speed. Now, speaking of failing parts, if something did go south with the shaft, I made a little brace that put it in place of the center bearing. Since this is a one piece dry shaft, there is no center bearing. So I just made this out of sheet metal and put it right in a spot. Now, if there is a failure, hopefully whatever's left of the dry shaft will ride on that little piece of metal other than falling down and causing more damage as the car comes to a stop. Now the last thing I'll mention is that the cup on the front of the OEM shaft. There's not one on a new part and it doesn't seem to separate from the OEM one. Now if I'm wrong please let me know in the comments. This will leave the seal of the rear transmission exposed. I really don't have a solution for that but just wanted to let you know if you replace your shaft, that might be something that you notice. Now after installing the shaft, 
Make sure you spin a couple times by hand to make sure there's no interference. And also check your clearances at different degrees of rotation because they are not uh, symmetrical, like the U-joints the of the shaft. So it may seem like you have a lot of clearance, but just rotate to make sure that there's nothing remotely close to your U-joints. Now keep in mind, there will be some movement when you're at speed or vehicles moving. So try not to leave anything in the chance. Now I am in the midst of doing a couple more upgrades. So I currently do not have a driving review yet of the drive shaft. But in the next couple of weeks, I have a bunch of more videos on some goodies that I've picked up and installed. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.